you'll struggle to find anywhere nicer than Underbank Reservoir. This is at Stocks Bridge, which is just above Sheffield. It's the north side of Sheffield. This reservoir is where I've come to do a lot of my practice for fishing at world level. Fishing with a slider, a sliding float. What today is all about is to expel a few myths about slider fishing. Lots of people seem to struggle with tangles, but if you set up right, it's not a problem. I've not had one single tangle in the session that I've fished today. If you can hear cars in the background, we're right at side of the A616, which is the road to Manchester. Once you're down on the lake, you never actually hear the actual cars, but of course, when you're filming, it's always in the background. You can fish the reservoir from either bank, but you're not allowed to fish off the dam head, and it's easy accessible with the path on either side. In the past, when I've fished with a slider, I've always used shots. And of course, what we had in England was the tin, the metal type shots. But these were very tight on the line. But of course, as time has progressed, we've now developed waggler weights. Waggler weights are perfect for slider fishing because they're completely spherical, so they're completely round. They also have rubber tubing inside the weight. So this can't possibly damage the line, so they're the perfect implement for fishing with a slider. When I'm setting up a slider, the first thing to do is to put a small bead above the slider. This bead needs to be quite tight so it doesn't pass over the slider knot. The float needs some loading in the base. The ones I use are made by DJK floats. They're a, a bodied float with a weight inside the float, a brass weight. This is important because that helps the float to keep with the shot. Once you've put the slider bead on, then put the float onto the line and then a float stop. This is for the float to sit on top of the weights. Then it's a case of adding the waggler weights. Now what I try to keep to as a rule of thumb is no more than three shots on any size of float. Now this is quite easily done because the, the waggler weights are from 0.5 of a gram up to four gram. So the rigs that I've rigged today, I've rigged a four swan shot float, a five and a six. Now each of the floats have got just three waggler weights in place to shot the float almost correctly without the droppers. Once you've put the waggler weights onto the line, the three waggler weights, then below that I have three number eights. This is for the waggler weights to drop onto so that they can't move on the line. The float stop then I bring down onto the top of the waggler weights to lock it in place. Now this rig is fantastic because you can actually move them weights anywhere on the line. Below the waggler weights, today I fish with just a block of three number eights and then also a swivel below that. So the whole rig is probably over about a metre to a metre and a half from the hook to the actual bulk. The three number eights and also the swivel are your dropper shots for the rig. The next thing is to find the depth. Above the waggler I have a sliding knot, what they call a slider knot and this can be easily moved up and down the line. Today where I fished is about 14 foot deep and I started off with the, the actual knot around about 14 foot, so I, I guessed what depth it would be. 
I then removed, I, I plumbed up with a, a four swan shot size slider. But what I did, I removed that off the screw and replaced it with a much bigger seven swan shot float. Once you do this, then the float is massively undershotted and you can put a plummet, I used a 20 gram plummet that I put onto the actual hook. This makes plumbing up very accurate and very easy because you cast the plummet out to the distance you want to fish. Because the float's massively undershotted, it lifts a long way out of the water if you're over depth. And what you can do is adjust the stop knot and adjust it so you're actually bang depth. You can set that float bang depth out at 30 meters because the amount of float is trying to pull up through the water because it's undershotted. Once you've got the rig working correctly, the shotting and everything's correct, you can cast out to the farthest side of the clip up to 35 meters and then you've got a possibility to draw the float back to where the ground bait's landed. Now you might say to yourself, well, how do I get the ground bait to land at 30 meters all the time? Well, it's very simple. All I do, I cut the catapult, the elastics on the catapult, so that when I make a ball of ground bait, it can only travel at full stretch to 30 meters. So it's as simple as this. If I make that ball of ground bait the same size, which is my hand sized ball of ground bait, using a ground bait catapult, I have made that catapult so it stretches and derives at 30 meters every time with a maximum stretch. Now, because you don't always fish at 30 meters, what I've done, I've spent some time and I've got catapults made to fish 30, 40 and 50 meters if I want to fish at a different distance, if it's telling me that the fish are further out and I want to go to where the fish are. The hook that I've chose today, there's lots and lots of good hooks on the market. But one hook that I've used today is the Acolyte Silverfish. These are fantastic hooks for fishing, for this style of fishing. I've been catching roach and skimmers today using just a size 16 Acolyte Silverfish. The hook length I've fished is 012. If it was a little difficult, I wouldn't be frightened to drop down to even 010. But today the fishing's been very good. I've already said earlier that you need a line that's quite thick. You want a line that's either 021, 022, or 23 maximum, a five to six pound line. A much heavier line than what you'd normally use for waggler fishing. But the reason for this is because when you're casting all the time, you want the rig to be very durable. But also, when you've got a thicker line, it causes some drag as it's coming off the spool and going through the rings of the rod. And this helps to keep the waggler on top of the shot so you don't get any tangles. The other important aspect is to use a line that sinks. And you'll have noticed today, every now and again, I sprayed the line with just fairy liquid and water and this helps the line to sink. You only want a small amount of washing up liquid, just a couple of squirts to a full bottle of water. When you're fishing on big reservoirs like Underbank, you need to be quite aggressive with feeding. And today I mixed up three kilos of ground bait to one kilo of lean. I wanted that lean in the mix to make it heavy. I wanted it to go down in the 14 foot of depth that I was fishing in. But you need to be quite aggressive because it's a big water and you're trying to draw fish to the area where you're fishing all the time. So I fed at the start five pints of ground bait that I measured out 
with a good 250 mil of casters, a couple of hundred mil of dead maggots. I wanted to be aggressive and get those fish into the area I was fishing. So I fed probably about 20 balls, hand sized balls of ground bait and lime at the start. Once I'd introduced the feed, after that I fed regularly. Maybe, maybe every third cast I've introduced quite a big ball of ground bait, again full of bait, casters and also maggots, a few pinkies and also some hemp because there's a lot, a lot of roach in this venue. Once you've cast past the feed area to 35 where I've clipped up the line, you can draw back to the ground bait. Then take off the bail arm so the waggler weight can travel directly below the float. So everything sets very quickly. If you don't do this, everything's fighting against the float because the float is pulling back and everything's wrong. So you need to remove the bail arm. Once the float's settled, you can then replace the bail arm on the reel. Today it's been paramount to let the bites develop. I've had lots of indications on the float and of course in good conditions like it is today, you can see almost when the fish has got the bait properly because you could see that they've got hold of it. And a lot of the time it, you was waiting maybe, maybe as much as two or three seconds for a bite to develop. The best up bait today has been double maggot, but also I've caught a few fish on casters because I've fed a lot of casters, and also a maggot and a couple of pinkies has been good at times. Let's have a little look at rods also. Rods are also important when you're fishing with a slider. I always use 14 foot rods. I use the Acolyte Ultras for the lighter sizes of float in a 14 foot. And when I'm using slightly bigger floats, up to six gram, I normally step up to the plus type rod, which gives you a little bit more backbone when you're punching out to distance. The other thing to examine is the cast. A lot of time people when they're fishing with a waggler swing the float round to cast and this is wrong when you're fishing with a slider. What you need to do is slightly swing the float out and let it just pass the rod and then bend the rod into the float. The reason why this is so good is because you don't bounce the float off the shot so you get no tangles. You've got to remember that the float is free running and that float, if it leaves them weights, that's when you can produce a tangle. So the cast has to be smooth all the time. The reason today I fished out at 30 metres is because this venue we have a lot of stones on the inside, a lot of rocks. And once you get out past 20 metres, the bottom is flat. So that's why I fished out at that distance today. I wanted to be past those, those rocks onto the flat bottom. I've had bites almost from the start. And I've caught maybe 18, maybe 20 pound of silverfish. A fantastic day's fishing. Underbank Reservoir, it's, it's day ticket water. It's six pound on the bank. I think it also, that ticket covers you also for dam flask as well. But six pound for a day's fishing here at Underbank, I think there's one other person on the lake today. It's a fantastic place to come slider fishing, but also often sat on your own. It's fantastic. 